Yeah. You have to unplug ah, that. I should Fine. unplug that, yeah. That's true, because if you plug things in, then you have to unplug them, isn't it? Usually. Good afternoon. We're live. Hello. Are we live? We are. Okay. We hope you're well. <laughs> we, myself, and... Wait for it. Me, myself, and I. This is what happens when the producer goes on holiday. Um, we could not get into our YouTube account. We just don't know what how, to do. Don't know how things work. Anyway, so mm. glad that you are all here. <laughs> it was not a coffee incident. It was the fact that we couldn't get into YouTube to do any streaming. And then it was just panic stations. Today, we are talking about the macro lenses, aren't we? Oh yeah, and you can announce something. Nikon, announce they? some stuff. It's great. Really looking forward to seeing what these look like in the flesh. Now, Rishi has already done a video. Some of you have probably seen the fact that he has a prototype to play with and that it is a sample copy. But let's watch it together. We, again. We'll just watch it now. That's all the stream is. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Um, there were also, uh, they can hear us. I uh, hope that you can't hear us twice. Please let us know how the sound is, because if the sound is on in there, is that a problem? No, it needs to be no, on in there. No, it goes there, and then it goes into the laptop. Should no. be good. Um, however, we are streaming from my 5G on my phone because of the slight dodgy internet connection. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, for your contribution to the coffee fund. Uh, very much appreciated today. Uh, and Tilly is not here, is she? No. Our little guest appearance. She's in the kindergarten she's for in, the first day. She's in puppy daycare, I think they call it. Yeah. First world problems. <laughs> exactly. Oh, dear. Right. Oh, hello, Andrew from Toronto. Hello. Yes, there we go. Everyone says the sound is good. Okay, good. So needless to say, because we don't have our producer here today to do all the wonderful stuff that she normally does, we will not be doing a giveaway because I cannot contend with that at the same time. I think I will just go completely mad if yeah. I'm trying to write down names. Producer got all the money, so <laughs> we don't have any money. To, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we are just going to plow on. Now, a few things before I forget. Please give us a thumbs up if you haven't already. Give us a subscribe. I'm pretty sure most of you are subscribers, but if you're not, please do. We've hit 7,000. The next target it is one million no eight thousand <laughs> one million would be nice i don't think in single digits <laughs> there's know. still not a single digit you mean like one digit more exactly you want more than that good well all right so uh if you haven't subscribed please do so please give us a thumbs up we love it when you give us a like and it also means that particularly because today is quite a relevant stream it will then just go out on the general airwaves and people might see it if it's getting lots of traction and interest. And we, we like that too. People can come see us panicking. And uh, we get famous and reach uh, at the same time. Yeah, if only. Uh, fam famous for 15 minutes or thereabouts. Um, so I can't answer all of your comments from earlier. I'm so sorry. I was too busy panicking trying to actually get the live stream live. However, we are going to dive in with the first one, which is the 105, because I think that's got the l most information out there. So it is the 105 yeah. of all the 105 yeah. macros. Yeah, exactly. So um, what are we... It's Friday today, so Wednesday was the announcement, wasn't it? Wednesday yes. morning at 5 a.m. Uh, BST. That's right. And we recorded a podcast on Monday. Yeah. And at the time of recording, no leaks were happening like Nikon rumors didn't know anything about those lenses coming no. out. It was actually an unusual thing because sometimes we manage to get information about the releases yeah. before they happen from Nikon rumors. Um, Fatini likes my top. It's actually a dress. You like that? There you go. Yes. <laughs> It's a so full uh, Indian, Indian inspired. That's right, say, yeah? exactly. Okay. Indian inspired dress. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to interrupt it's this broadcast. Just a regular shirt. <laughs> yeah. um, so now we had the announcement of both lenses, which we weren't really expecting. Yeah, because we thought they're going to announce one, and then there's going to be something else, and there's going to be something else. Mm. But you can actually announce two macro lenses, so at least we covered on all macros for now. Yeah, I don't think we'll see a macro for a, for a while. Yeah, because I think if they would just announce one or five, if people say, well, it's thousand pounds, it's too expensive, I want a cheaper macro. Mm -hmm. But because they announced both, it kind of covers all angles, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, now, thank you to Ian. And for Terry, Terry says something nice for Con's puppy, two pounds. Oh, thank you. Those those uh, puppy snacks are really expensive now, aren't they? Yes, she says that's she's true. A, she's a rising star, though. So that's true. Go. And uh, <laughs> the 
was it the kindergarten? The, the puppy teacher? daycare. Is it teacher the, or mother? I don't know. Teacher. She said that Tilly is well socialized dog. Oh, there you go. Yes, she is. Spent a lot of time with us. And thank you yes. for your contribution, David Liu, also known as my mate Dixon. Thank, thank you, you for that much. as well. So the 105, if you haven't looked at Rishi's video, do go and check it out after this. Um, I'm going to pull a little bit of information from him. Because he had the prototype, I was able to sort of see from his pictures how big the mm -hmm. lens was. My, my comparison was the 51.2. It's actually not this big. Uh, we didn't have a 105. So if 105 VR looks like this, <laughs> the Z version <laughs> looks a little bit smaller. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't have, we don't have a 105 VR in stock at the moment. I've got another example. If 105 looks like this, the Z version looks about that big. At least I picked up a lens, all right? So the, the 105 2.8 is smaller than the 51.2, but it's not that much smaller, actually. It's probably about an inch smaller. Um, it's also a 62 mil diameter. It was this or the 24 to 70. I wasn't sure okay, which yeah, one to We don't up. have literally no 105s available, no. either new or secondhand at the moment. No, exactly. And to be honest, the price point that it's at, which is 999, was a pleasant surprise because I had heard on the grapevine it might be a little bit more expensive. And then when the price was actually released, I was, I was quite happy with that. You know, the, the first thing I thought when 999, compared to the price of uh, the F mount lens, which is about 759, mm. and back in the day was 599, you know, yeah, before but the pound weekend it, and all this. But the RSP, the recommended sales price, is 1,000 on yeah, that one. But also, also, remember that Canon, their F mount version of Canon thing, whatever they call their mount, the AOS mount, mm. it was 999 about six, seven years ago. So that mm. price bracket was there. It's just Nikon ones tend to be cheaper for some reason. So, yeah, interesting. Up, it's they? very interesting. And so there's a few things that I like that I've looked at on the specs. Um, I will just run over the specs quickly. So, yes, it's a 62 mil diameter thread, mm -hmm. which is the same as the VR F mount version. Mm -hmm. If you compare the F mount version with the FTZ alongside the 105, um, actually, that's slightly better bigger it's like like fractionally taller but they're a similar kind of size and i think if you compare the weights uh rishi had it written down and i actually forgot to note that but they're quite similar in terms of weight as well okay so f mount version is 750 grams and go. the z lens is 630 there grams. you go so it's actually lighter, particularly if you have to add the FTZ to the 105, makes it a more compact package, if you like. Mm -hmm. A couple of things that I thought were interesting, and that was another reason why I picked this lens up, it was there was logic behind it, is it has one of those customizable sort of uh, easy access rings. Oh, I see. And also that little LCD panel. That's right, the little LCD display. So these we're starting to see more and more in the S line. Um, I know you're not necessarily going to be able to see that very clearly, but you got the idea, the little window here. One of the things that I like about this is, apart from showing the aperture and the focus scale, mm -hmm. on the 105 macro, it also shows the reproduction ratio. Okay, so if it's one-to-one, -one, you know it's one-to-one. -one. Yeah, so it starts with one, two, and then it mm -hmm. goes up from there. So if you are sort of a serious macro photographer and you and you like that sort of knowing what your reproduction ratio is going to be, then I think that's quite useful to have yeah. on the lens display. On another side of things, so this lens obviously is internal focusing. Yeah. Imagine that it's 105. <laughs> 50, however, has to extend itself like it's all the 60D lens. Yes. And actually on that barrel that extends, they show the reproduction uh, scale there. Yeah, they do, which is quite interesting. I've got um, this 60, which is the G version, mm -hmm. which I love to pieces. Um, and that's also internal focusing. Mm -hmm. I'll talk a little bit yeah, about... It's, it's the G1 that's extended. Yeah, that's right. I will talk about the comparisons between those later. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the 105s first. So uh, John mentions that I like the new limiter. Yes, yeah, so along with other features, you've got a switch, an extra switch on the side of the lens, which is the focus limiter. Now, people who have the old D lenses, for example, will perhaps be familiar with, on some of the zooms, we had a limit switch. Now... What that means is that when it says, when it's switched to full, that means that the lens uses its full focus range. So all the way from closest focusing distance to infinity. With lenses like the 80 to 200? Yeah, so you could potentially limit it where you want to be. So if you were actually focusing on the close focusing distance, 
it would limit it from the closest focusing distance to five meters. But if you um, if you were focused somewhere about five meters range, so a little bit longer, then it would lock it from fi five meters to infinity. Yeah, and then they were, for example, on the on some of the other lenses, the limit was literally just from let's say 0.5 meters to I think infinity. from the 105 macro. Five meters to infinity. Yeah, think, yeah. exactly. Uh, so that the lens wouldn't struggle to focus in the closest range if particularly if your subject was beyond that, right? So it's an idea of speeding up focus a little bit. The 105Z actually has a slightly different limit switch. Its limit switch goes from the closest focusing distance of 29 centimeters mm -hmm. to 50 centimeters. So that is the focus range that you can use with the limit switch on. That's cool. Rather than being the longer end, which so is what the old one is. you just used for micro work, effectively. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I know my subject's not going to get further than... Yeah. 50 centimeters, so I'm going to put the limit switch on, which means that the, the lens won't try and hunt in the distance. Yeah. And what we've noticed, at least from pre production video from uh, Richie, mm. that it uh, foc also focuses much slower at those close ranges. So limiter would help that, would help just the camera to find that area to focus on. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're much quieter than me, apparently. I'm much quieter. Okay, let me no, just have a little juice. Look. There you go. I'll no. turn it up to 11. There you go. That's, that's plenty. Now you're going to be really loud. Good. <laughs> also, I'm just a bit more enthusiastic. <laughs> I sort of speak I'm like... Gonna, yeah. <laughs> Release a portrait lens, Nick, an 85 1.2. Yeah, it's nice mellow and... I would be dancing here. Yeah, know. that's right. Uh, then you'd be a bit more sort of uh, jumping up and down. The 105 and the 50 are definitely in my sort of ballpark because the right. macro lenses are what I love. Um, so yeah, I actually also sound uh, low because I'm shy. That's why. <laughs> you really, after all the weeks and months of doing this. Um, now, JP says it's the S class version of the lens of the S lens with the small display. Yes, exactly. Not all of the S class lenses actually have that window display. For example, the 24 to 70 f4 S is an S-line lens, but it's not the fancy schmancy S-line That's lens. That's right. And 14 to 30 f4 is also S lens, but it doesn't have the fancy schmancy Tassio screen. It doesn't. And uh, it also, I don't think, does it have that little window on it? I can't remember if it's got that on mine. That little um, thing that says Nick or S. <laughs> it might do. I've got the lens and I can't remember. Yeah, I don't look at the lens. I look no. at the images. That's right. That's what's important. Uh, Roy says, I miss the days when Nikkor lenses had a 52 millimeter size. You know what? So do I, Roy. So do I. So um, I'm going to talk more about the 50 mil and its diameter later. But the 105 being 62 mil does mean that if you've had the old 105 macro and you're using filters with it, mm -hmm. those will just go straight on the new one. No problem. Um, so apart from the window, which mm -hmm. excited me very much and the reproduction ratio, <laughs> easily pleased. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, my Casio watch has a better window. <laughs> um, it also has an Arneo coat. Oh, yes. It has the Arnie, the Arnie. The Arnie coat, which yeah. is anti-reflective, which is quite good. Mm -hmm. um, a part of that means that you also get, I don't know if that's part of the Arneo coat or the Nano Crystal coat, but you get reduced color fringing. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. supposedly, reduced color fringing means it's easier for the lens to focus. Now, based on the autofocus tests that... Rishi did with the prototype, mm -hmm. he said that the new lens was definitely faster. I wonder if that does have something to do with the coatings as well as the construction of the lens, because Nikon seemed to state on their website, reduced color fringing results in improved AF performance. Isn't that... Wow, okay, it, that's interesting, yeah, because yeah. I would never think of this this way, that, no. you know, coating could affect autofocus performance. Yeah. However, because yeah. it's all software-based nowadays, yeah. it could potentially... Since, I guess, light visibility? I think that might be it because yeah. it's very much, you know, you're relying on the lens's ability to, to focus. Okay, I think, I, think I need to do more research on that because I definitely want to know. No, I want to know why. It also has nine rounded aperture blades, which means that the bokeh is lovely mm -hmm. if you look at those shots. However, you did notice that the depth of field was very shallow, didn't you? That's true. From the test shots. like yeah. super shallow. So if you were planning to do anything with it that involves sort of food photography or not the artsy fartsy flower photography where everything is out of focus except for one single petal mm -hmm. you would probably need to make use of the focus stacking uh the what's it called focus shift shooting yeah. function i think that would probably be quite useful and in fact i think early on in lockdown days last year i did a stream which was very much sort of 
community uh, based information mm -hmm. of what the best software was to use for that and how to set it up and stuff. It was pretty basic, but if you don't know about focus shift shooting, you might yeah. find that useful. I think it's a, it's a fine battle because normally you would say, well, increase your depth of field, so shoot at f16 or f22, and it's common for microphotography, let's say watches yeah. and things like this. Very much so. But according to Tom Hogan, we start to get diffraction at f8 on Z7 cameras, 46 megapixel cameras. So that's where focus stacking comes in, mm. into play. So if you want to get the ultimate image quality, so if actually you start shooting at f8, you want to do focus stacking, then line them up all together in some software, and then you get the perfect shot. Exactly. One thing that Donna Cruz does is she says, look, you can stop down at f16 or f22, but bear in mind that not all of your frame is going to be completely sharp, whereas if you use focus shift shooting, you know you have control over what range is sharp in your picture and, and you will just get a better result. It have takes a bit more work. Have you used yourself um, quite extensively? Or? Not extensively. No. I've used it a little bit for um, kind of still life photography, mm -hmm. but for food photography, I quite like the blown out background. Mm. You use a sort of F11 mm -hmm. aperture and you don't get too much diffraction. True. But then it depends on the size of your subjects. There's a few methods. Also using flash, for example, using the SBR1C1, which is the uh, close-up kit, mm -hmm. Six of them. Yeah, six of them all the way around. Then you can shoot the at F ultimate package. You can shoot at F twenty two, get those nice moody, you know, blacked out backgrounds, and mm -hmm. you don't really see diffraction. Maybe if you're using a Z seven, but I was using my Z seven. That's true. I guess diffraction is more of a problem for stuff like landscapes and things like this, yeah, where you've got quite a lot of information. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna address a couple of your comments here. So Kevin asks why the lens is not always F two point eight. This is an excellent question, Kevin. Um, for all macro lenses, you will actually find that the closer you get to the subject, so let me just say, let's pretend this is a macro lens for a minute. But and it's not. It's not, thank you. And let's say I'm focusing on my microphone here. Now, at the closest focusing distance, obviously not that much light is going to get into the lens. If I move it a bit further away, more light is going to get into the lens. So what Nikon macro lenses do is they don't, pretend that they're wide open even here because then mm -hmm. you're not getting the equivalent of f2.8. Nikon doesn't lie to you. <laughs> they try not to. Um, so with the 105 f mount lens when you're at your closest focusing distance your aperture will stop down to f4.8 because that's equivalent of how much stops of light you're getting. Uh, with the new Z one, it's f4.5, I believe I wrote it down. Yes, 4.5. Yeah, and then of course, as soon as you start to move a little bit further away, more light gets into that lens, so the lens can start to actually give you the equivalent of f2.8. It's just how much light is getting into the lens. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with your lens. Yeah, actually, it's uh, one of the questions that we get uh, asked every now and then. Just someone calls up and says, well, my lens is 40. It's at 4.5. Don't go to 2.8. Exactly. Yeah, so there's a couple of people have also answered in the comments. Hopefully, between that and us, that makes sense, Kevin. Um, Andre said, did you notice the new S logo? I did, Andre. I did. Did you notice is it? Is it fancy? It's not. Yeah, it's not in a little bubble like that. Mm -hmm. It's like out. It's like the whole S is a bubble. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, now I, I know why it costs thousand pounds. <laughs> oh dear, Graham said, sorry I'm late. I've been uh, photographing the Bellman Pullman, I think it was. Yeah, very nice. Show off. It's a train. Just, I didn't I know, know if you knew I've, that. You, you knew know. that. I know, it's a train. No, stuff about trains. It's a steam train, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Zach would be very pleased with that. He's uh, My oldest is, a. Uh, despite thinking he's too cool, He's going to hate me for saying this. The other day we were at the train station mm -hmm. and a, like a Great Western Rail pulled through, which we never see. And he's like, Mom, check out that train. And then he was like, I mean, I don't care. <laughs> What's that express train? Not the Polar Express. What's the... Polar Express. No, the one that goes through Switzerland. Which one is that? It's called... Come on, there was a movie about the it. The Orient Express. The Orient Express. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot. That's like a one on the bucket list. Mm -hmm. Right, enough about trains. You can't really shoot trains with macro lenses. You could. You could. Maybe, with the 50. Um, so, now, just having a little look here at some of your other comments before I move on to my next point of... Oh, there we go. Baxter said, with phase detect, then if the image has chromatic aberration, etc., mm -hmm. then it will slow down the process. Similarly, with regard to contrast detect, depending on how the glass renders the image. That's a good point. That was kind of how I... Interesting, okay. Thought about it, yeah. but it was it was interesting to see Nikon's own publicity saying reduced color fringing means faster AF or improves AF. That was what was quite interesting, I mm -hmm. think. Um, excellent. Right, so then... 
Yes. There are a couple of other things. Uh, apart from the limit stri switch, it has a an optical VR element. So much like the older 105 F mount, there's VR in the lens as well. So if you're using that on your Z6, Z7, Z62, Z72, then you'll have both VR systems working in conjunction with yeah. one another. But if you use it on Z50 and potentially future Z30, yeah. then it doesn't have VR on the sensors, so therefore the VR in the lens will kick in. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, being a Z50 user, I probably would put a macro on that. You would put anything on Z50. I will. I put yeah. all the lenses on Z50. Love it. Um, and I would definitely think, because it will become a 150 millimeter lens, mm -hmm. having the VR is super helpful. That's true. For that. Um, Eve suggests a GOW trip on the Orient Express. <sighs> Do you think marketing budget? Yeah, when <laughs> coffee yeah, fund. The coffee fund. Yeah, that's a uh, oh, couple of years of coffee fund. Yeah, it might be because it's really expensive. I think it's like two or three thousand pounds per ticket. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Well, speaking of coffee fund, thank you to Adam for your contribution you. to the coffee fund and, uh, and for popping in last week. It was lovely to see you. Um, Sam says, can shoot model trains with macro. Yeah, mm, it's true. You can. True. Absolutely. Um, now, so again, one of my dreams to have a model train coming from the kitchen. I would put a cup of coffee on it and go straight to the living room. <laughs> That's your dream, huh? I saw it in a movie somewhere and it's just, yeah, it's stuck. Very cool. <laughs> um, yeah, there is it, yeah depth of field. Now, Hector points out depth of field being very, very shallow, um, even at 5.6. It yeah. is true. If you have a look at Rishi's video. I'm going to keep talking about it because it's mm -hmm. just the most, the basically the best piece of information that I've gotten so far on these lenses. And it's pretty much the only piece of information that is currently available as well. That too. Um, his sample images and video really show what it looks like when it's shooting even at 5.6, at f4.5. Um, f2.8, obviously, because you're a bit further away, the depth of field isn't quite as shallow, mm -hmm. but it's very, very shallow at those uh, closer focusing distances. Did we mention focus briefing? Focus breathing. No, I didn't mention it. Mm -hmm. it from what we could see, um, it looks like it has a similar amount of focus breathing to the F mount version. About but the same, isn't it? Yeah. But it's a lot. It's more than I realized it had, actually. So that means, obviously, that the um, it was Wallace and Gromit train. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> um, I mean, in terms of focus breathing, so that just essentially means that the effective focal length or the field of view, if you like, changes at different ends of the focus range. Mm -hmm. So at infinity, um, it, the subjects will look slightly further away than if you're shooting at the closest focusing distance. That's not the end of the world. Um, it's more problematic if you're using like a zoom, for example, because you don't really know what the effective focal length you're getting is. But when you've got a prime lens, it's not, it's not that bad. It's just yeah, a bit and annoying. Yeah, I mean, you... <laughs> All it, micro lenses will focus breath when you focus in a closest focusing distance. Yeah. Because the focus breathing is not a priority there. It's actually designing the lens to focus so closely. Yes. So I guess, you know, there's, a, there's no, not a balance there to be maintained or anything like this. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, Avna asks, when can we get it? Is it faster with MPS? In the UK, Nikon aren't doing an MPS priority list. Um, if you want to purchase it from our good selves, then you just drop us an email at info at grazerwestminster.co.uk and we will send you, basically, we're just doing a, a list. So we send the link when we can take your order just so that we get them in the right sequence. Yeah, I saw 24th of June as a release date, but right. will they show up on 24th of June and how many? That's a question. Always, always the question. Um, our main issue as suppliers, because obviously we talk about cameras, we're very enthusiastic about Nikon equipment, but we're also at the back end where we have to service the great, uh, wonderful public that we have. And the waiting list is probably my my biggest problem as a general manager I would say because it's that fine balance of how many are we getting in and okay these people ordered first and then we have our golds and platinum and diamond subscribers and it all kind of gets very very interesting so because we had people on the waiting list for this lens a year ago mm -hmm. when it was first announced on the roadmap um, it then didn't make sense to just go free for all everyone yeah. buy it because quite factually there were people who'd already said look I would pay you if I knew when it was coming sort of thing like uh, yeah. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> we have people uh, on the waiting list for Z8, Z90, uh, you name it, D880. Yeah. The 100 to 400, the 400 yeah. to 600, all of those lenses we have waiting lists for. So if you want to go on any of those, just drop us an email. We will add you to the list. It's not a problem. And um, then I will be uh, kicking myself later. 
<laughs> no, then we'll, we'll tackle it in a sensible fashion. I know everyone is super enthusiastic about this one, so we just have to play it clever. Is that an iced coffee you got today? Yeah, it's cold <gasps> brew. Fancy. Yeah. Okay, just keep it somewhere over there. You made it so last night. <laughs> um, now, John correctly points out the new lenses do not take the teleconverters, according to Rishi's video. Now, I will say an anonymous source sent me a piece of dialogue from a communication from Nikon Europe to say that they did take the teleconverters. We've got spice everywhere. Yeah. And then, so I got very excited about that. And then within a few hours, because Rishi's video had come out, they then queried that and they came back and said, actually, you might be right. It probably doesn't. And so we were a bit like, well, doesn't it or does, does it? But Rishi's actually shown us the back of the lens and it doesn't look like it can fit that very deeply. Do you reckon them. when the lens comes out, we're going to have our version of Mythbusters where we're <laughs> going to, you know, disapprove the theory? <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Um, my thought had been, wouldn't it have been fantastic to have a teleconverter with that 105? That's true because F-mount lens does take teleconverter. Yeah, it does. And um, in terms of the getting further or longer, the only other thing you can do is really put it on a DX crop. Yeah, which put it on Z50. Put it on a Z50 or DX crop your your F, uh, FX Z camera. Mm -hmm. However, Rishi's sort of speculation, also Simon Stafford's wishful thinking, was mm -hmm. that maybe we'll see a replacement for the 200 macro. And then maybe that is why they didn't make teleconverters compatible. That would be fun. It would be good. Uh, it would be great. It does take extension tubes, but when you're getting to like 105 focal length, I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make. Hold on, what takes extension tubes? The, the macro lens. Oh, you mean you can put Kenko tubes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, enough. not the Nikon ones. Cause fair enough. They okay. don't make them for that. But yeah, you could put the Z extension tubes by Kenko on there. Um, the problem is that lenses from about 70 to 100 onwards, you don't really see much of a difference in terms of close focusing distance. And so it's not going to be like two to one reproduction or no. anything? No, okay. No, it won't do that. Um, but yeah, you could do like throw it all on there, then stick on a close up filter just for good measure. <laughs> and you'd be like, and chuck it in a the beam. They'd be like inside the thing yeah. that you're taking a picture of. Um, but yeah, I think that it's quite adaptable, particularly as the 62 mil focal length, so, sorry, uh, diameter mm. is a common diameter. So yes, you can get 62T, isn't it, or something like this? Uh, you can get 6T, yeah, it's 60, called 6T. 62T. <laughs> potato, Anything, potato. potato. Yeah. Um, but also you can get Kenko close-up yeah. filters. Look, I know my macro stuff. Apparently so. <laughs> I'm so glad I brought you on to this uh, live stream exactly. today. Exactly, happy to help. <laughs> Um, yeah, Hector, I have to say, if you haven't checked out his uh, Instagram, actually a lot of our watchers um, are on Instagram and they have beautiful profiles, but Hector also um, shoots a lot of macro with apparently a Sigma. So I can't plug you anymore, Hector. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, a 200 mil Z macro. Uh, that would be quite an interesting one. I never really, I mean, I love the 200 F4 D micro that was mm -hmm. discontinued earlier in the year or last year. Was it now? Last year? More than. Yeah, I think it's more than the year now. Oh, time has really flown by. But, and sharp as it was, it took an age to focus. It's a difficult lens to use mm. because of the focal distance, isn't it? Yeah. You really, it's difficult to shoot handheld. You need to have plenty of light. But also, if you're shooting handheld, it's really difficult to focus because you're so you know, close yeah. to the subject, you know, because of the focal distance. So, but if you have to put it on a tripod and you want to figure out butterflies or something yeah. or dragonflies, it's very difficult to actually frame it. Yeah. So it's not the easy lens to use. Absolutely. I think no. 105 is definitely a lot more manageable. I think so. So the moral of the story is if you uh, want that focal length, then probably best to go 105 and then crop or um, use a Z50 mm -hmm. uh, or any one of those things, I think that will probably do the job. Um, Dave says, I'm definitely getting the 105. I think for me, this could also be a game changer for street photography. I see no VR on off switch. Is this always controlled through the IVIS in my menu? Yes, it is. So when your lens has uh, VR and the body has VR, then you just basically turn the VR on or off. There's no like turn it off on one and then turn it off on the what other. What about Z50? Z50 has no IBIS, so that's a really good question, actually. I wonder. I wonder if you can do it via the menus. Maybe with a firmware update, because I don't remember yeah. there being an a IBIS on off menu that's function. True. 
But it's a good point because the 16 to 50, I don't know, but the 50 to 250 is a VR lens and that's a, that's a Z50 lens. So maybe there is. Yeah, and then 70 to 200 is VR lens as well. Yeah. So I wonder, yeah, we need to check that. I'm sure, I'm sure you can turn it off because then, let's say, imagine your lenses, your camera's on the tripod. Yeah. You would want to turn it off. Exactly. That's a really good point. Okay, well, we will have a look Thanks at it. Thanks for asking the question and not answering it. <laughs> I'm here to ask questions, serious questions. <laughs> like, great. Uh, so It's like this guy on the article of the why the cameras are so expensive. Yeah. I'm not here to, to, to say why. I'm just here to say that I've looked at those and I... And, they, and they, they are more expensive nowadays. And you know, that's, uh, that was the conclusion. Much. It was yeah. great. Well, we drew our own conclusions from that. So there we go. Um, Nick Can says macro 105 would be good for portraits and street photography. Yeah, I do think that it will double up nicely as a portrait lens. Yes, I would test it first because I find that the 105 of mount, the bokeh on that lens is quite nervous for my liking. Yeah. That's so I would like want to test this one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, from what I saw, <laughs> it looks very nice. Excuse me. Uh, one thing I will say is that Based on Rishi's video, do you remember he did that scene where he walks towards the camera and further away? <laughs> Sorry, yes, I think it was a highlight of my you Yeah, know, you my love, day. That. love yeah. it when he does that. What I thought was that at the closest focusing distances, it didn't seem to acquire focus quite as fast, but it is a prototype lens, so I might have been being a bit fussy. But I would expect it to be slower at close focusing distance. Mm. Because even if mount lenses, have you, like, if you try to autofocus them at close focusing distance, A, they would struggle and they would hunt. Yeah. So, um, and that's because obviously at that time it would go, for, you know, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards before it locks it in focus. The 60 is notorious for that. Actually. That's the thing. Yeah. Now, the Z lens works slightly differently. It doesn't go forward, backwards, forward, backwards. It tries to get there the first time. Mm. And that's designed so in case you film video and things like this. Mm. So it will be less jerky. And because of this, I think it's a little bit slower. Yes. And... Has, speaking of video, it looks fantastic for video, mm. I will say. Some of that footage that I've seen, both from Rishi and also from the lovely lady that did the Nikon Europe launch with Donna Cruz. Mm -hmm. She's a videographer, and she did all these kind of food shots with the 105, and mm -hmm. it just it looks really good for that. And, you know, very smooth to reacquire focus, and everything was, was really well done. Tom, thank you very much for clarifying. Apparently, the Z... 50 manual says it has the option for VR in the eye menu. So yeah. thanks for that. <laughs> See, we learned something as well. I we thought you use that 50 extensively. I do, but I don't really turn the VR off <laughs> ever. Um, I would set it to auto and press the button. No, we don't No, do we don't that. do that. No. <laughs> um, nothing wrong with setting it to auto, by the way. Just I don't shoot. Everything's wrong. <laughs> it's not true. So uh, Nick Can says, will the large Z mount tele lenses like the 400 and the 600 be similar to the F mount 400 and 600? Tricky because actually if you have a look at the um, roadmap, the sort of not the, mm -hmm. the roadmap itself, but that picture of all the silhouetted lenses, mm -hmm. it, they look quite big. They do. Yeah. And you know, my thinking about this is if you look at, let's say, 51.8, which is bigger than 51A that they have. Yeah. I think Nikon is going actually not for the size, but for the exceptional image quality. Mm. Because if you look at comparison, the same 51A G and 518 S, or even if you look at Rich's video 105 uh, VR G and uh, 105 S micro, it's a lot, lot sharper. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that those long lenses, when you can release them, they will be a lot sharper than their F mount equivalents. Yeah. Exactly. Roy says no one seems to be discussing whether it will be a good reproduction lens. Now, looking at sharpness across the frame compared to the old 105, because that's the only thing that we've seen. And again, we've only seen the results from the prototype. The new lens is sharper, like considerably sharper. So I would say if the 105 F mount was good enough for your reproduction work, then the Z mount certainly will be. What I would be interested to know was is if the 50 is going to be considerably mm. sharper. Because for me, I mean, I tend to not work with those longer focal lengths yeah. very frequently. I mean, the 60 is one of my go-to lenses, both for my F6 and for my Z6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you, I, I do own 60. I don't have 105. So yeah. for me, 50 definitely is the one I would test first. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, as Dusty Volke, Volkel, yeah, Volkel, sorry, says, will the ES2 be compatible? I can tell you it won't be compatible with the 105. Um, however, 
if you do, the one thing that we won't know until we get one to test out is whether or not the Z extension tubes will bring that closest focusing distance close enough to use the ES2. That's a good point. The main problem with the ES2 or the, the issue that people face is that the, the number of lenses that are compatible with it is quite small because the ES2 extends to about that length, right? There's not that many lenses that can focus that close. The 60 is one of them. The 55 uh, AI, AIS lenses with extension tubes will bring the closest focusing distance that close, but it really does need to be sort of, uh, I think it's 16 centimeters mm -hmm. or that 15 centimeters thereabouts. So if the Z extension tubes will bring the closest focusing distance down to that length with the, with the 105 Z, then yes, you'd be able to use the ES2. Um, now let me just speak about the 50 mil because that's relevant to that. The 50 mil front diameter mm -hmm. is not 55 as I thought it was when we did our podcast. 46. 46 millimeter. Teeny tiny. What's that all about? So as you'll probably know, if you've got an ES2, the ES2 is a 52 mil thread, but it comes with an, uh, a step up ring, if you like, or you need a step down ring from the lens um, of 62 to 52 millimeter. You just gotten so bored now. You're checking your no, social I'm actually media. checking the specs of 50 mil lens. So, <laughs> I was like, he's know. done. He's out. Um, so the ES2, you would need a ring. My question is going to be, will they do a 52 to 46 step down, step up ring? Very interesting. Will question. Nikon Thank make you. one? Absolutely. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> no, but will Nikon make no, one? I, I, I'm sure we will see some third parties. Definitely, because you can get those cheap on eBay for like two pounds a piece or something. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are cheap alternatives. 46 mil is an unusual size, but I think that there are maybe one or two other brands that have it. So if you know of a sort of third party manufacturer that produces step up and step down rings, then your 52 to uh, 46 millimeter should do the trick because that 50 mil, the new 50 does actually focus close enough to mm -hmm. use that. Mm -hmm. um, JP says the 105 goes to one to one. So it will, my guess is that it will work with the ES2. But yeah, it, this is true, JP. Yeah, note that the distance is from the sensor plane and we have to take the lens length off of the 29.29 meters. Sorry, that's very complicated. But I understood it's what you meant. Like, yeah, it's a good point, JP. As soon as I get one in my hands, I will test it with my ES2 and then I will report my findings, uh, probably on Instagram or something because... <laughs> I don't know if everyone wants to know that. Um, <laughs> I wanted to know. It's very interesting. Well, when you're going to do it, you can report by yourself. And, you know. Yeah, exactly. I'll do that when, when you're going away, whenever mm. that is. Um, so the, did you have something else to say before I dive into No, the actually, I was looking into those, but I'm actually... Um, Having a look at the 50? Looking at 50, uh, it looks good. It looks light. It's um, very teeny tiny. I can't remember what the weight is. I thought I wrote it down. Yeah, 260 grams. So that's like nothing. And that one, it would be an interesting one, because if you compare it to 518, like we, we talked about 105 used, being used as portrait lens. Yeah. Would this work as a, just a general walk-around lens? Because it's smaller than 518. So it actually, is. If, as a documentary street life type shooter, that would work really well, because it's Good. fairly discreet, even compared to 1.8 version. It, yeah, and actually, you know how Nikon announced their... They're sort of not pancake, but they're the travel. The 28 and 40. The 28 yeah. and the 40. Mm -hmm. Those are also similarly small. So yeah. I wonder if they've now, they've done these small compact line lenses to try and kind of, because you could go 28 and then the 50 macro, and then you could have those two, and those would be your two lenses. I don't know if you'd need a 28 or 40 and a. Look, 28 2.8 is lovely. It's yeah, one great. of the lens that I'll just buy on a whim yeah. and I'll just have it on my Z6 as a kind of my take with me kind of setup. It's not really a know? whim. It's quite calculated if you're thinking about buying it now when it's not out yet. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> buy it. I'll check the prices first. That's yeah, it. If it's not 999, then I'm sure <laughs> then I can afford probably one. Then you'll probably end up yeah. with it. Um, interesting additions to the 50mm macro are that it is fluorine coated. So that's the, that's the coating that Nikon used to kind of repel dust and dirt. So quite easy to clean really. Um, the focus distance, as you said, is on the lens along with the reproduction ratio. So no fancy window. But yeah, it extends itself when you're focusing effectively. Yeah, exactly. Um, also has those nine rounded blades. Uh, so similar bokeh. So bokeh should be nice, no? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, it is also one-to-one -one reproduction. Mm-hmm. 
which is nice. I don't know what, we haven't seen a prototype or image samples or anything really, except for what's on the Nikon website. So Yeah, um, I don't think Nikon UK has them yet. No, but when they get one, we've been promised that we will be able to have a look at it. So we'll let you know what the image quality is like. I like the fact that it's a 16 centimeter close focusing distance. That's pretty good. Very good. That's the same as this one. Um, pretty much actually no yes this is it says you know what's really funny is that the 60 mil says it's 18 it's 0.185 mm -hmm. but actually when you manual focus it's slightly closer mm. so it is probably about 16 um anyway i just thought that was interesting i find these things mm. interesting i know you're like what? <laughs> that's great information <laughs> mm. um i have to say thank you very much to randall for thank your you. contribution to the coffee fun goodness me we're like a one hundredth and twenty fifth away from our Orient Express trip. <laughs> no, something like that. Um, now, Randall asks the question: Are there any worries about these new lenses, that are, uh, plastic casing, and wear with wear and heavy usage? So, no, not really. I mean, the these lenses, these S line lenses, they're pretty sturdy. They are polycarbonate. But not all of them are poly, and not all parts of it. Yeah, but you know, we had the same when they had AFD FS lenses, and mm. then they released, let's say, 2470G, the you know the kind of new generation of um, you know F lenses, and a lot of people said, well, they look plasticky to me. I don't like them. But actually, just judging by the amount of repairs we had with them, not so many, to be honest with you. No, I think they stood the you know the time test whatever. of time. Test of time. That's yeah. the expression. Um, and actually, normally the parts that that get the most wear are the metal parts of the camera bodies, more so than the lenses. We don't usually see lenses with sort of cracked parts or anything like Generally, that. Generally, yes. And uh, Nikon is quite well known for the, you know, just kind of quality control and just, you know, like they don't have many production issues, mm. you know. Um, Steve, the prices are 999 in the UK for the 105 2.8 and 649 for the 50. I noticed that the 50 is also $649. Yes, and $999 as well. Way. But you guys pay taxes. <laughs> yeah, that's on top of that's this. ex tax. Not in all of the states, but you know, but we have twenty percent tax included in the price. Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah. for for our US uh, watches, six four nine and nine nine nine, also for you, but in dollars plus your tax. Unfortunately, I don't know other regions because we don't normally get those prices. But um, you can. I think it's the same in euros. Yeah, roughly probably, the same number. Yeah, probably is. <laughs> Exchange rates don't mean anything anymore, apparently. No. Well, also, so because of Brexit, this lovely thing <laughs> that we have, um, if you buy from anywhere outside the UK, you basically don't pay the UK VAT. So those prices then reduce by 20%, the 999 and the 649. Mm -hmm. However, you then got to pay shipping and whatever your local yeah. tax is. So it's, it usually works out about the same um yeah, I think price-wise, the United States has it the best, probably, mm. because, yeah, you you know, in some in some states, you, you don't have no tax at all, or it's only 7%, while we are here paying 20%, and in Europe, it's about, like, something like 21 to 23%, depending on the state, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Bcash says you are both looking pretty vibrant today. <laughs> also, I love my 51.8 AIS pancake Japanese model. Yeah, there was one made specifically for the Japan market. Nice. Um, do you think there will be a mirrorless version of that? It kind of looks like the 40 2.8. Is it, is it a 2.8? What is it? The 40 that they've announced? It's 2.8. Yeah, 28.8 yeah. and 42.8. It, it's kind of got me thinking because obviously Z30 will show up at some point, mm. right? And the 28 and 40 is effectively 42 equivalent, you know, on DX yeah. and uh, 60 equivalent. Yeah. So it does sound to me that they can release something like 35 1A DX. Like, like you know, I, in, in some points, I, I like the technique in redesigning the lenses completely. Mm. But in some cases, like 35 1.8 G uh, DX lens, just slap a new mount on it and that's it you know so yeah. don't, don't need to reinvent the wheel there no it's true it's designed to be cheap and cheerful just design the lens for it so Don't but you know that's the thing but hopefully i don't know i don't think that 518 the small one the pancake is uh, you know like on the plants yet but maybe in three four years down the road yeah and the 28 and 40 we had expect they were they were listed as pancake lenses that was going to be the design idea or concept behind them um and 
Alas, it doesn't seem to be the case because they don't quite look pancakey. Is yeah. it an F2? It's F2, yeah. So, ah, yeah. so that yeah, so it is as close to the 51.8 as we're probably going to get at this stage of the game anyway. But it's a strange one because 40 is close to 35, isn't it, than 50? It is. Yes. Um, just to give you an update on the prices, uh, Dr. Robert Goldman says 1600 Australian dollars. Wow. Um, and Jane, thank you very much. It's 1,099 euro in France. Mm. So I would imagine it's probably the same across most of Europe because I don't think they change from region to region in Europe yeah, very Come often. to England. <laughs> come to the UK when you can. Uh, and if you can, then you obviously the beauty of, of when people will be able to travel again is that you will be able to come to the UK and then you'll be able to buy stuff here and then reclaim the VAT and you won't have to pay import duty. Ship the boxes separately. Bring the <laughs> no, no you don't have to do that. <laughs> There's 10 ways how you can save your tax. <laughs> so it's not I'm financial Russian, advice. Yeah, that's, of no, course. Yeah, don't, um, don't take my advice. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you to Barra for your contribution to the coffee fund and also thank you for popping into the shop the other day. We do have people coming to the shop. You know, it's very nice to be able to see everyone in, in person as well. Um, Nick Can says, does the plastic look of the Z mount give the appearance of being less robust compared to the F mount lenses? Um, possibly. Yeah, I think it's a visual thing. But it is. But once you pick them up, you can feel that they're really solid. I mean, even the 21.8, the 51.8. Oh, yeah, those are nice. The 51.8 F mount, which I had for a long time, was so plasticky in comparison. The, the Z mount version is really. Yeah, nice. but I, I do feel that the 28 and 40 mil that they, they've just announced, uh, that they do feel a little bit more plastic than look. usual. Yeah, yeah they definitely. do. And I think that's um, that's going to be kind of, we'll see when we get them. But I think the idea is that they are small and light and Exactly. Size. And I think the price will uh, also reflect that, isn't it? Yeah. Like, at least we don't know the price yet, of No, course. but we hope that they're going to be not, not too expensive. Um, just a few other mentions on the 50 mil. Uh, so it's got 10 elements in seven groups. One of them is an ED element and one's an aspherical element. So image quality wise, we're not expecting it to be as good as the 105, obviously. It's going to be much a completely different lens construction, but uh, it still shouldn't be too shabby. If it is as good as 60G, I would be quite happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, it also has the smallest aperture of f22. I actually didn't write it down for the 105, but it, I remember it being really small. It was like a tiny maximum. What, the aperture? The min yeah, the... Maximum aperture, minimum aperture, the small one. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> you can tell it's me. F32. F32. Yes. Okay, that's not bad. I don't know if that is... Um... It's the same as F-mount lens. Is it? Yes. Well, there you go. So they didn't I change know, much there. Because my phone says so. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, thank you. Um, was there someone else that I missed? Let me see... The DX lenses aren't robust. Ask the floor in my local co-op store. <coughs> oh, no, Sam, what were you doing with your lenses on the floor? No, the DX lenses aren't robust. They weren't really designed to be. Um, it, Roy says the electronics in the Z cameras and lenses are unlikely to last as long as the old AIS lenses. Yeah, I mean, we're talking like pure mechanics versus Yeah, I, I think if you compare that Nikon F is still, you know, working, you still know, going. like in most cases, you know, yes, of course, but... Not the meters usually so a much. Lots of things back in the day were a lot less complicated than we have them nowadays. And unfortunately, those little cameras nowadays are like small computers. Yes. So there's a lot more things to go wrong. So exactly. yeah, unfortunately, and unfortunately, they're all kind of recyclable nowadays in a way that five years down the road there's something else big and you know better comes out isn't it yeah. so not in terms of recycling exactly yeah. uh roy said micro lenses usually go to f32 well thanks roy <laughs> i don't usually shoot with that sort of aperture so i didn't realize um someone asked micro or macro this is a really good question macro is the subject of making small things look bigger Micro, the word micro means life-size reproduction. Uh, really loosely defined there, but that's basically the difference. So Nikon put the word micro on their lenses because the idea is that they are life-size reproduction. They will make things look one-to-one, -one, which means that the subject will be projected at the actual subject size onto the sensor. That's what one-to-one -one means. So sorry, that was a really long time ago that you asked that question, but I just remembered it now when someone was mentioning something about micro. Um, thanks, Sam. Yeah, you can put a fun picture of the broken lenses in the drive holder. The horror. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll prepare myself mentally for that. Uh, apparently, even the manual focus version was also F32. So nothing fancy there. Nothing's changed. I thought, 
and I'll, I'm obviously mistaken, but when Rishi was showing in his video, like, oh, and this is the aperture range that it shows, I thought it went like down to really, really tiny. And I was, that was like, I think <gasps> you were hungry when you were watching mm, that video. That was it. I was yeah. trying to eat and watch it over lunch. Um, anyway, so uh, what is it? the eight layer man says, go on and buy or order a new 105. It works out only £2.73 a day, price of a cappuccino. That is a very exactly. good. If you stop workout. drinking takeaway coffees and start to skip lunches. <laughs> <laughs> it's all adapt very quickly right. in about a year you will be able to afford one exactly yeah. and Il Milko says that 1099 euros in the Netherlands as well mm. so they are a similar kind of price there which is quite interesting now the 50 mil also has a limiter switch did you is know that, that? So? yeah so it has the full range and then its limit switch goes from 16 centimeters to 30 centimeters. So again, if you want to use the 50 just in the closest focusing distance, uh, sort of band and you don't want it to hunt further, which would have actually been a great feature for this little 60 mm -hmm. mil right here. Great feature yeah. for that. Uh, Cause I found that really annoying when it hunts miles away and you're True. like, the subject's here, stop doing that. So, um, yeah, so I, it's good. I generally use manual focus with my macro lenses. Yeah, but, you know. exactly. But when you, when you're shooting something like, a bee in flight or something. You sometimes That's need true. the autofocus, unless you've got some real skills when it comes to manual focus, which... I I've don't. <laughs> I don't shoot the bees very often as well. <laughs> no. Oh, dear. Uh, you're very welcome, Dusty. No problem. My absolute pleasure. So the pre-orders, John, that's a good question. How long are the pre-order lists? They are... How long is a piece of string? No, we... <laughs> It's difficult to say because it's probably changed in the time that we've done this live stream. Yesterday, apparently, every single phone call, I was, it was my day off yesterday. So I don't know. I didn't know what was so going on. So you spent the whole day of your day off on the phone. Yeah. Discussing pre-orders. I did, yeah. No, just the morning, actually. But as from what I understood, there was a lot of uh, inquiries yesterday morning. And when I spoke to the lo lovely Steve downstairs, <laughs> he said, did you also want to go on the list for the 105 macro? <laughs> so, well, anyway. generally it takes uh, a day or two to kick in for kind of general public to find out about the announcements. Yeah. So yeah, generally the first day we get, you know, people who just read it online, but then a couple of days later, everyone else finds out and it's just, we are flooded with phone calls and emails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's usually like once a release happens, the few days afterwards just leave us all feeling like we're on the verge of collapse. So um, it's been a little bit like that recently, but... but yeah, this also shows that people are really interested in macro lenses for their series yeah. cameras. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I'm expecting a similar thing for when the 100 to 400 and the 200 to 600 come out as well. Mm -hmm. Because, again, we've got a few people already anticipating that one. Absolutely. And the Z9 and the Z8. Pretty much everything. <laughs> Everyone has huge enthusiasm for these things. Um, Abe says eight, 89,995 Indian rupees. Rupees, yeah. Yeah. For some reason, I thought reals. No, it's rupees, no yeah. rupees. Uh, I don't know how much that is in pounds, but there you go. So they've got a very different pricing mm -hmm. structure uh, over there. Now, there we go. Oh, Avna is using a lower 100 mil. MC, which is macro, yes. 2.8 manual focus. That's a manual focus lens, yeah. For the Z6. Mm -hmm. We've talked about a few of those third-party brands on the podcast, mm -hmm. haven't we? How do you find it? Yeah, that's a good question. How do you find it, Avna? Let us know. And Randall, thank you very much. Yes, give us a thumbs up. We've got 179 wonderful people watching and only 83 likes. Boo-hoo. Let's get it up. Yeah, exactly. We would very much like all your thumbs up. Um, I think I've covered all the specs. I These are my notes. <laughs> <laughs> for the day. I think the biggest thing that I took away from uh, Rishi's video on the 105 was that it's sharper. Mm. It, like, it really is sharper and faster to focus. Um, as Rand no, Roy actually said, will anybody be using the micro lens in AF mode? Well, people do, actually. There are some people that do. Um, That's true. But they, we expect another announcement from Nikon by the end of the month. So we don't know what it is, but the rumor is that there's something else is coming. Yeah. The more so, the merrier. Absolutely. So guys, what do you think? Yeah. We, we like releases. Where they, they keep life interesting. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, most lenses obviously have the option of autofocus and manual focus. I think it's quite important to have autofocus if you're doing insect work, for example. But obviously for still life and flower work, not, not the end of the world. Um, they haven't explained why they've changed the word micro to MC, possibly because people were confused. 
because <laughs> there's always been that confusion of is it macro is it micro why did they call it micro um so i think it's just down to that really more than anything but i'm glad that they've changed mm -hmm. it that's just my personal opinion uh now have you discussed the new versus the old 105 on the z50 uh, actually, no, but looking even at the center of the frame, the new 105 is sharper than the old 105. Yeah, have a look at Rich's video. It's just clear as day how different the F mount and the Z mount lens is. It's so much sharper. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it makes a really big difference. John reckons it's going to be a Z30. Um, John, I don't know how many will get in the first batch. This is why the waiting list is always a bit of a precarious thing and that's why I haven't just said you know just throw your money at me and I will just make it happen magically it's like mm. no actually I need to be very sensible um, we will of course anyone who um, wants to go on the waiting list we will keep you updated we're not going to send out bulk emails to everyone on the planet and say you know <laughs> there, there, there's XYZ number coming in or yeah. something like well, that well if you would get thousand lenses in one go then everyone would get one that's for sure exactly um, but it doesn't work with Nikon this way I'm afraid there you go wow Colin says 870 pounds is uh, 89,995 rupees I think we should move to India yep and then yeah. um, it, but it's 1,014 euros so actually that works out quite well that's not bad. It'd probably be quite a lot to get one shipped from India to mm. here, though, I think. Uh, anyway. uh, I use my AF on my micro as well as manual. Can't see the difference between the two. Well, there you go, Jane. Yeah, I use AF quite a lot. I mean, I use both, but I, I don't see any problem with using autofocus if you need it, particularly if you're shooting a vine blowing in the wind. Mm. It's quite useful to have autofocus. So poetic. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what can I think of that would be similar? The caterpillar did look fantastic on Rishi's video. Those vi little video snippets that he did mm -hmm. were truly brilliant. And it made me think this would be a great lens for, you know, David Attenborough style, yeah. Blue Planet, not Blue Planet, the other one, Life, that one. Yes. Don't go underwater with it <laughs> unless you've got underwater housing. But also what I like about Rishi's video, he doesn't try to hype it up. No. He just tries to give the information gives the facts. without any excitement or anything, just trying to be as objective as possible and saying, hear the facts, do whatever you want with it. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, and then exactly. we come in and we say, yeah, it's good. Like, you just, know. just get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeremy says, hopefully the telephoto lenses will be next. Uh, the F mount 70 to 300 plus FTZ works well, but I want to get Z exclusive. Yes, I quite yeah. agree. And what do you guys think about this rumor about the retro camera? Because this is a kind of, it came out of nowhere. Completely out of nowhere. We yeah. discussed it on the podcast a little the, bit. That's the thing. And then it just disappeared. There was no confirmation, nothing. And like, like did it even really happen? Yeah. And then, so, so my question is like, like, would you release that 30 that is retro? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Isn't it? Because that 30 has to be a little bit more modern, you know, because it has to kind of attract everyone, you know? Yeah, it's definitely a, a tricky one. Also, the Z30, if, it, if they do go down that route, will have to be cheaper than the Z50. Well, yeah, it's, it's 500 pounds, isn't it? It yeah. should be. And how yeah. much is the Fuji XT, whatever version we're Well, that's on the now? thing, because Fuji obviously is famous for their retro cameras, and all the X series are kind of retro style camera, but then you got. XT4, which is their flagship or whatever that is now. Yeah. And then you've got XT30 or XT40, which is their D3000 series cameras. Yeah, exactly. So the question is, yeah, so how do you price it? Mm. Where do you put it? That's you know. a good question. Yeah. Scott says, is the new 105 sharper than the 85 Z? We don't know yet, actually, but that's really good. Which 85 Z? 1.8? There is only one. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking about 8512, which is well, which has been rumored. So <laughs> that's the one for me. The one that doesn't exist yet. Does it? How does it compare to a non-existent lens? Um, that's, Very good. It, yes, yeah, it's in great. my dreams, it's fantastic. We don't know. The 100 to 400. A few people are saying, will that be released in 2021? What do you think? I mean, I'd love. If it was, just for the sake that we need those longer lenses. Yeah, I think at least going. one long telephoto lenses. I mean, by long telephoto, we're talking over 200 mil. Yeah. It will definitely be released this year. Yeah. One or two, but definitely one. There you know, you it just makes sense. It's Olympics. There's lots of things, summer, et cetera, et cetera, Z9. Yeah. You know. And, you know, John says a retro camera is not needed. And Baxter says the retro will be aimed at the Fujifilm user. So that's interesting. The retro. But at the same time, we, Nikon is not known for their retro camera. So we only have one off DF. Yes. So that is the question. Yeah. And then if you look at it, okay, the last many kind of retro 
manual Fox camera was FM 3.8, yeah? So that was discontinued in 2006, I think, or something like that. So mm -hmm. nothing happened after that. So you got DF, nothing else. So if they're going to release that, that's going to be awesome because... That's a completely kind of a new direction for Nikon. I'm actually just reading yeah. these comments. And um, Sun says, big fan, big DF fan, minus the dreadful AF. Yes, it was very slow. It was not really designed for that sort of thing. But would you get a DF if it's in DX body? I said, very welcome a new retro camera from Nikon with or without mirror. Mm -hmm. Steve says, retro camera not needed, but Z mount DF would be nicer for an old chap like me. Um, Rob says don't understand retro sounds like a fantasy film is dead <laughs> fuji film on a camera is like horseless carriage on a dead. car but it's not it's so is not we're gonna order about 300 pounds worth of film in yeah. the next couple of weeks we are we're very busy um and interesting enough, john says i'm a nikon user since 1969 but have little interest in retro especially at a premium price but <laughs> And then Nick Cannes says, still have my FM2, but manual lenses I still, uh, and manual yeah. lenses that I still use each week. But like here, here's the question. Okay, if you get a retro camera and it's a DX, for people who are interested in, interested in retro cameras, would you buy it? Because if it's not ZF full frame, which is a DF equivalent, if it's a DX, yeah. what's the, your opinion? That there? is a good question, actually, because if they're going to make it a small body... Yeah. Because the, because the Fuji cameras are DX, basically, they don't do that... They do a bigger mirrorless yeah. camera, but it's not as, as No, the whole X series is effectively DX or APS-C. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I have admitted a couple of times I've actually had, I had an X-T10 and then I had an X-T20. Before that, I had an X-100. Yeah, I, I had X-Pro1 and X-Pro2. Yeah. Um, and both those cameras in terms of handling and the manual shutter speeds and all that stuff, I loved that stuff. The thing that I didn't get on with Fuji was actually the menu system because I'm like, I'm so used to using Nikon that if someone said to me, oh, can you bring a tiny camera along to this event? You're not the photographer, but can you just take some photos? So I'd take my little Fuji. And I remember one day I shot the whole evening. I didn't realize I was in like pano mode or something. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I was like, like, Those images were quite special. They were really something else. And they said, I love what you've done with this, like, this sort of border that you put around the thing. I was like, yeah, that was totally on purpose. Intended. On purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm admitting all my deepest, darker secrets here. But it just, I, if Nikon had at that time made a retro style DX camera, mm -hmm. and I tried the V1 for a while, but it wasn't retro enough for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Did, did they release V1? Uh, the did V1 Nikon came out, system? yes, around that time time a little bit later oh okay but i thought wasn't. they just leaked it and it never came out no it was existed no, okay. so just knob um okay so just to answer your question there first of all thank you randall who has just paid for my internet connection for this thank live you. stream for we your contribution fiber. yeah <laughs> fiber yeah. from my phone yeah. and thank you joy for your contribution as well to the coffee fund um we should do a macro photography competition be cash absolutely um so Brandon says would love a retro looking camera for vacations and travel use. Anthony um, says film is not dead. You're quite right. Uh, Roy says, is any of that film 120? Uh, 200 pounds of this. Yeah, <laughs> yes. for me. Yeah. Yes, it is. I'm still quite well stocked with my Portra 160. Um, you see, I'm a, more of a Portra 400 guy. I know. Well, yeah. I, that was all I could get at the time. The 400 was out of stock. Anyway, and Lee says... Let's see. Would volume of sales for the DF determine if Nikon made a retro camera? High margin, low volume. That's what they're going for. Yeah. So I don't think so, actually. I don't think that would make uh, a difference. Nikon says only buy full frame as I can't stand DX APS-C, so okay. But if it's retro. But if it's retro. If it looks fancy. Baxter says DX, no FX, yes. I prefer the manual well, style interface. That's the thing. I'm a bit of a snob. That's mm. the thing. I, I'm all a full frame guy and... Yes, I, I used the Fuji system for quite some time, and then as soon as this came out, I kind of switched. Just, you know, I like full frame. I understand. I can. I personally see the benefits of having a DX camera. Like, but having used the Z50 enough, the only thing I don't like about it is its battery life. But everything else, I cannot fault on that yeah, camera. Yeah, no one tool. knows about your love of Z50. Mm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't yeah. talk about it enough. Yeah. Um, Scott points out that Z glass and cameras are the future. And Christian says, unless Nikon can make something as great as the Fuji film simulations for the retro camera, then there's no need for a retro camera. Actually... Um, don't know if you've got the Z camera, uh, Christian, but the Z bodies have a similar thing. They don't give them the Fuji film names. They don't call them Provia and Velvia and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, because Nikon never made film stocks. Right, but they do have film 
emulation fil the sort of like flat profile picture controls no, no they have that too. no they do yeah the, the neutral I, I use neutral profile it's it renders really well in my opinion but yeah, yeah if you're into like vivid you know colors then yeah the the what the if you want a velvet look go for landscape you know it's quite yeah, saturated it's, yeah it's very similar and you the beauty of the picture controls and the nikon cameras is that you can actually create your own profiles oh yeah there's a software you can download to your heart's content and you can just create on your computer and then load them up on your camera yep Yep. You can also do it in camera if you don't want to do that. Uh, Avna says, I believe the retro should be a Z30. I'm going to wrap up the comments here shortly because I realized that we're, we've been talking for over an hour, would you believe? Um, <laughs> Next week, retro Z. Cool hour. Um, and Tom says, I'd use a DX camera as a secondary travel camera, but it wouldn't be my main camera. No, definitely. Um, I'm going to carry on reading these after because I find this quite fascinating. Um, there are some really good comments about this. I think we've touched the nerve, yeah. <gasps> it's so exciting. Anyway, if Just we... It's like poking the bear. If anything know? more kind of solid in terms of information rather than a fleeting rumor comes out, then I think we could probably do a really intense live stream on speculation. <laughs> but if we get such a feedback in like three minutes... Yeah. Can you imagine if it's actually the release one? Yeah, it would be very interesting. Because yeah. be, the DF was such a kind of buzz creating oh, camera yeah. even if it wasn't for everyone it, it created a talking point around nikon so Absolutely. it can be interesting right that's it thank you very very much for all of your likes all of your subscribes all your tremendous contributions to the coffee fund we truly appreciate it we will see you next week um if you do want to go on those waiting lists drop us an email we'll add you to the waiting list and then obviously we'll send you the link to order as soon as we can and have a great weekend. Yeah, to be continued. <laughs>